Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. Today is October 5th, 2019, and we're doing a drop in math tutoring session for the 2019 2020 school year. This is number four that we're doing this year. Open discussion, let's do some mathematics, high school math anyway. Maybe a little bit of elementary, maybe a little bit of uh, post secondary. Okay. And we're going to keep on doing these, uh, provide a space for people to ask questions. And uh, if they need math help, we'll try to give them the help. And there's a few people that come here that uh, are well versed in the language of mathematics. And uh, a couple that are much better, <laughs> much better at math than I am. So they've been helping people out as well. Okay. Um, aside from that, if you have any questions uh, or anything you want to discuss regarding high school mathematics, uh, just post your questions and the uh, name of the game is uh, we'll deal with math first. Uh, but it is an open discussion, so we can talk about education, basically anything school related. Okay. Aside from that, it's just a sort of a little waiting game until people start rolling in. And let me show you what I got in terms of snacks here. I got tea. This is like 99% of the time I got tea with me. <coughs> Resubscribe. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to a math tutoring session. Drop-in session. Apple and tahini. Okay, tahini with maple syrup, this one. Mask of Raven, how are you doing? You love these mask stuff, eh? Fun. I like it. I like it. Just an hour ago, I was doing physics, university physics with a student that uh, graduated. Um, and he had some problems that we dealt, that we did. I watch all your YouTube, has never caught a live stream yet. Vicious on YouTube is my, is me. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Resubscribe. I don't remember your name from here, uh, especially I don't remember the logo. The, I guess that's a snowflake, a whole bunch of arrows going in. It looks like a snowflake thing. Welcome to a live stream. I hope you enjoy uh, this version of things. It is basically the same thing as uh, the videos I've been loading on, but it's a little, watching it live is, it's like watching a game live, right? It, it changes a little. And by the way, the sound should be better now, okay? For some reason, a couple of months ago, because I was doing a certain setup, I set this up backwards. So I think that's why we were getting a low sound. A lot of people were saying the sound was pretty low on some of the vids that we loaded up. Uh, so I checked my settings and did this. I went, oh my God, I got this the other way. I thought it was okay both directions, but it wasn't. I had set it on the one direction coming this way. So hopefully the sound is better uh, for people. And the lighting is going to change right now. We're in fall. We had like rainstorm this morning and then the sun came out and then we're getting cloudy over and it's getting hazy and then sun's coming out. So it's going to go through ups and downs, right? Intrepid, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho, long time no see. Hope all is well, my friend. Doing well, brother. Doing well. Uh, enjoying the school year. For some reason, the school year... Uh, the summer was really short. It seemed really short for my end and for my students as well. Uh, and we started kicking off uh, into doing mathematics with my students like right when September started. Uh, and usually it doesn't pick up for me until October, but I'm a month early, so I'm well into the school year now. And loving the time and spending with my students. Uh, there's like three or four that I've had for a long time that I'm working with. Uh, and it's a pleasure working with uh, with kids for an extended period of time, right? You learn their character, you learn about uh, some of their struggles, what they've come through and uh, how you can teach them better, right? Which is really important in our education system, uh, which is one of the main problems in our education system where, you know, Kids go from one class to another class, it's totally different teachers, and then one year to another year with the same course, totally different teachers. It's good if you had a crappy teacher the year before, 
but it's also bad because the new teacher doesn't know what you know and they have to go through it's very weird it's very weird once once uh, for me anyway once i work with a student for an extended period of time you can fill in the gaps what they're missing speedy gonzalez style like really within a depending on where they are in their education within a couple of weeks to a couple of months two or three months you can fill in everything you need to fill in and then you can just build on top of that and i kids man people are we're we're so much more intelligent than what the centralized system uh, gives kids credit for kids right now can learn it much faster than we learned i learned anyway uh, so it's a different game jamie jane james 101 hi chicho i'm new to your channel hope you're doing well doing well thank you very much and welcome to our channel welcome to sort of uh chill uh multi-layer stuff we change things up a fair bit i hope the sound is coming okay now i see the little thing on my trigger and the volume is higher it's usually where it is but i think it's crisper now with the setup with the thing pointing in the right direction <laughs> right should we do should we do some problems i wrote that i, I worked with a student that we did physics uh about an hour a couple hours ago and I wrote down a couple of the problems, which were, uh, which are just basic physics questions. And the and the kids in uh, uh, university, I don't know if I should call them a kid anymore. I call all my students kids. Oh, actually, do I call them kids? I don't call them kids. I call them, I call them by their names, right? But when I refer to them, I call them my my students or my kids. Uh, what color should we use? Is this one? Does this one sponge off? So if you have any math questions, post them. For sure we'll do. I'm assuming things will we'll get more math questions coming in during when we get closer to exam period. Let's check this out. How does that come out? And that comes out good. Let's make sure it rubs off easy. That rubs off easy. Okay. Should we do a little physics? Should I show you I wrote them down? Let's just on the comic book. A board, extra board. Here, I'll show you this one. Check this one out. So, name of the game for physics is you got to check your units, right? Units is everything. Okay. That's what physics is: is applied mathematics. So, if you know math, then you can do physics. All you have to know is understand the system you're in, right? So, one of the questions uh, my student had was this, and this is uh, you encounter this in grade 11 physics you encounter in grade 12 physics and you encounter it in first year university physics okay or college physics or whatever so this is this is stuff that they cover all three years you get them okay if you're lucky you get them in grade 11 you get them in grade 11 but basically he had this right here's a graph this is time in seconds usually and this is velocity in meters per second okay and he had a graph like this okay and this is time uh, i forget what the numbers were but two four six eight let's go ten seconds and let's make this i think these were at five ten negative five right and the question he had was this uh, actually you know what he sent me the images uh, da -da 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 -da. let me read off the question exactly that way i don't make a little mistake and uh ba -ba. oh yeah here we go oh yeah this is the graph nice actually this went to 12 i guess here let me erase this and then i'll close this guy and then open it up again because my computer works overtime so the fan noise will go up too high right negative 10. so here's the question figure one shows the velocity graph for a particle having initial position x zero okay 
x0, and this is x0, okay, this is the x, well, this is velocity 0, but it's starting off at position 0 at t equals 0 seconds, right? And the question was this, at what time or times is the particle found at x equals 35 meters, okay? So let me close this guy off. That way the computer doesn't go crazy. So the question is, at what time is x? This thing starts off at x is equal to 0, at time is equal to 0. At what time do we find the position of this particle at 35 meters? Okay, so just imagine there's a position x here, and once time, uh, you start the clock, and the velocity of this guy is increasing per second, right? So there's acceleration here, right? If you see this velocity, and this is time in seconds, okay? What you see is an accelerating particle, right? So velocity is increasing over time. So velocity at time zero was zero. At time one was this guy here, whatever that is, let's say 2.5. At time two is two seconds is five meters per second. At three, I'm assuming it'll be at 7.5 meters per second. At four seconds, it's going at 10 meters per second, okay? And then what it does, it starts slowing down. At five seconds, it's back to 7.5, and it reaches a velocity of zero, right? And then starts traveling in the negative direction. So if you're watching this thing, this particle or this person, right? By the way, if I miss stuff, Lance left hook. Uh, thank you for the follows and thank you for the subs if you decide to sub this channel, right? So there's this guy. Whoop, 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 whoop. Let's assume he's running. I don't know how fast, you know, 10 meters per second is, how many kilometers per hour that is, right? We can convert it. Maybe we do a conversion to figure out if this is legit to assume it's a, it's a man. What are 10 meters per second? Well, I used to run the 100 here. Well, we can, we can do this mental math, right? I used to run the 100 meters in track and field. And the best time I had was like 11.8 seconds or something, right? I think the best time in the world is, I don't think they've broken nine seconds yet. Like nine point something seconds. I, I don't know if it's reached eight point something seconds yet, right? It will at some point, I think. But no one thought they would have broken 11 decades ago and then 10 decades ago and no one thinks that or when I was running anywhere the last 15 years they will break nine but pretty sure they'll break nine right so if you can run 100 meters zero to 100 meters let's assume in 10 seconds then if someone's traveling at 10 10 meters per second that's a legitimate speed someone could be running at right okay so we could make it a person okay so this person starts running from x is equal to zero. This is their position zero, right? Equals zero. Starts running, and they're running faster and faster, right? When they get to four seconds, it takes them four seconds to reach a velocity of 10 meters per second. And then their velocity decreases. I should make this a little bit shorter right so they're accelerating from here for four seconds right four seconds and then they start decelerating over the same four second period to zero so it takes them four seconds to reach maximum speed right richard zach thank you for the twitch prime so right and then for another four seconds, they decelerate. And usually if you're running 100 meters, when you cross the finish line, you're slowing down, but you can't stop right away. If you stop right away, you're gonna break bones, right? You're gonna tear muscles. You gotta slow down, right? So you accelerate, accelerate to your top speed and you slow down. So for another four seconds, this person decelerates until they reach a velocity of zero right here's a velocity of zero and then 
they start going in the other direction for two seconds because the velocity is now negative. So if this is our positive direction and in physics, what you do whenever you're laying down a problem, you give a certain direction, uh, you make a certain direction positive and the other direction negative, right? It's very directional, it's vector based, right? So physics, there's a lot of vectors and vectors is basically magnitude and direction, okay? So this person starts going in a negative velocity direction and we're talking just a two dimensional system. So for another two seconds, this person runs back and this is two seconds, right? Two seconds. So the question was this, okay? And this is, you know, you don't have to draw this, but it's a good idea to know what's happening in this system, right? And that's the, that's the key with physics. It's math, applied mathematics. So what you're doing is you're taking your math abilities, the powers that you have, you're looking at a physical situation in the world. This happens to be kinematics, right? Kinematics is bodies in motion, I guess things in motion, right? You could have a whole bunch of other different types of systems you go into that physics deals with electromagnetics, magnetic gravity, particle physics, quantum mechanics, anything you want, right? This is kinematics. It's one of the simpler physics, um, well, these types of problems anyway, situations that we have. Sending rockets to the moon is kinematics. It's also got uh, gravity in there and different formulas that you have to end up using right so the way it works is this the question was this at what point or oh sorry at what times is this person 35 meters away from when they started right the wording of the problem wasn't and that's one of the issues with teaching physics and stuff like this the wordings of problems aren't the best way, right? If you take the integral of the function of the graph, you get the distance moved in one direction, right? You will, yeah. If you take if you take the uh, if you take the integral, you get the acceleration. You take the derivative, you get the um, distance, right? The derivative kicks you down one dimension or one unit. The integral will kick you up. You get the acceleration through the integral, I believe. Right? So, for example, if we have here, let me bring up some kinematics. Bring out my kinematics formulas. Kinematics formulas. And that's what you need for physics, right? You need your formulas. Okay? So, take a look at this velocity and distance. Here. Um, let's do this here i'm going to do this with a different color uh, since you brought it up we'll deal with it right now okay we're going to take a lot of tangents no integral gives distance oh integral gives distance hold on let me look at the formula integral gives distance oh yeah i'm going the other way Psh, pooper me right the area under velocity curve yeah the area under velocity that's the way we're going to uh use it right the area under velocity the function is initially a function of speed so yeah so let me write down the formulas here I always get things backwards so here's velocity the formulas you have velocity final is velocity initial plus a t and the distance is equal to I'm just going to write it down v initial t plus one half a t squared right so these are two of the equations you have for kinematics and here's the other ones here let me write down the other ones as well let me bring up chat so i'm not missing anything here's the other you basically have four formulas you deal with in kinematics okay here's the other one uh v squared v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus minus plus two a d and uh, distance is equal to v t oh no we already got that one why is it giving me two of those ones? Oh, minus. Uh, yeah, we use this one. Distance is equal to uh, one half, one half v final plus v initial plus v initial plus v initial times t. Okay. Now, back in the day, they used to make us memorize these, but I don't memorize these. Or 
uh, later on you didn't really memorize this okay did I forget a distance did I forget a distance uh, distance right here this one changes in distance V I T is the constant term I believe this one so basically if you take the derivative of this guy right the derivative of this guy is it's just a quadratic function right thanks for the correction by the way gang All right for sure correct me when I'm wrong please please uh, it's how I improve right so if you take the derivative of this if you take a derivative of a any type of quadratic here 5x to the power of 3 plus 2x squared all you do you kick the power down to the bottom and subtract the one from it right take it down one notch so this one would be 15x squared plus 4x right so this one the power is one so that kicks down and that becomes here let me write it down and write this guy down here so d is equal to v initial one times v initial is just v initial or the equivalent of it or the equivalent of it right oh you want the c out here that's right i haven't done this forever you want the c out here okay but we're not going to do an integration i'm not there yet thank you for that oh hold on how come this didn't get approved allow 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 sorry about that putin roaster the automat zaps things out right so the one comes out multiplies that and this becomes t to the power of zero plus one half times two comes down a t to the power of one and then that just kicks the uh, derivative of a constant which is what the c is is just zero right so plus zero if you want so this becomes d the derivative of d which is velocity so d oops dd over dt i guess that's the symbolism which is velocity math explicit so i can see why it block blocked it oh that's why it does it so this becomes the derivative of d relative to t is meters per second basically is velocity is equal to v initial and velocity is now v final plus a half kills the two a t right that is this right so if you take the derivative of that you get that dd over dt okay cool <laughs> i gotta erase this now because we want to find the area right if you want the uh if you want to take the integral you're gonna go the other way and stuff but we're not gonna do the integral really i thought i've forgotten how to do integrals okay i would have to look it all up so let me erase all this the brown anyway let me kill this guy clean up our space a little bit we might leave the formulas up there so here's what we got right and one thing you have to appreciate with physics is units is everything it's the units that matter ehm ehm i don't know what ehm is so units is everything okay so right now the units of the y-axis is meters per second the units of the x-axis is time never mind <laughs> what is this this is physics right he was cleaning his throat oh, <laughs> oh okay so yeah uh, in the distance formula you would add a constant equivalent to where you start he's assuming it's zero where i suppose yeah we're starting at zero right so x is equal to zero so the y-axis is meters per second the x-axis is seconds okay so in general if you get a question like this where they say at what time is this runner 35 meters away from where they started assuming constant acceleration huge constant acceleration is one of the key factors right now if you're looking for time right if you're oh sorry we're 35 meters blah, 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 blah. yeah we do that uh, if you're looking for a distance 
then you look at your units you go okay how do i use the distant property of our graph to get meters out well if you multiply these two guys the seconds will kill the seconds and you get meters right that's one way you can think about the physics problems that you get whenever you get a physics problem look at what units specifically you're looking for or your marker units and take a look at your setup to try to figure out what you could do with the units to get your appropriate units that they are referring to or wanting right so for this problem what you need to do if you multiply those two guys to get the meters you read narnia i haven't read it yet i've read parts but i haven't read it yet and i haven't watched the movie either i've read the c.s lewis i've read the other the trilogy that he had the the more adult sci-fi trilogy c.s lewis had and that i loved that was amazing right uh, the hidden the oh i forget what they were called uh, the, the, it was trippy it, it was very cool it was very cool okay so take a look at this so for this problem the only thing you needed to do is figure out at what area under the curve is equal to 35 meters well, I'm not gonna lie don't lie the golden compass the golden compass uh the golden compass is narnia isn't it the hidden the hidden s secret or something and uh palalandrel or something c.s lewis i'm too dumb for this don't get a single thing about all this now check this out here uh daska check this out to find out how far this runner has traveled all you need to do is find the area okay so here let's find out after four seconds this is two three after four seconds how far this runner is from where they started okay so if you want to find the area here check this out that's an area of a triangle this is a right angles here right area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height this is something you do in grade eight you do this right so this is check like this question is a university first year university physics question the only mathematics you need okay is basically grade eight or grade nine math as long as you understand what the system is telling you as long as you understand the units right there's a little bit more to it but the only math that you're really using you're not even using these guys like we're not we're not even going to use these guys right we're just going to use area under the graph I, I teach high school math yeah but i'm not a teacher in an institution i do private i wouldn't function in an institution well so let's find the area here the area there is going to be four times ten so one half four times ten one half of four is two two times ten is twenty twenty meters right so in the first four seconds this runner has traveled 20 meters okay let's figure out how far this runner has traveled up to eight seconds right so another four seconds okay this is again four the total distance from there to there and again the height is 10 and that's a triangle again well it's the same thing as this so from there to there decelerating that's another 20 meters so here's 20 and if you count it to here that's 40 meters total that the runners traveled in eight seconds right now they were asking the question was at what time or times is the runner 35 meters away from their original position right well their original position was here 35 meters would be 
like if that's 40 it would be like here this is 35 meters oops 35 meters right so the runner is 35 meters away from where they started twice both on the way here they hit it once and when they're running back they hit it twice so there's twice that they're 35 meters away so all we have to do is figure out the area of the graph where the sum of the area is equal to 35 so let's check this out let's do the area for this six after six seconds this part is 20 right let's figure out what the area is in this part right the area in this part is 2 times 5 right because from there to there is 5 so 2 times 5 divided by 2 that's an area of a triangle area triangle is equal to 1 half base times height which is equal to let me kill these guys and this looks scary but all we're doing is just geometry right so one half the base is two times two times five right this kills this so that's another five meters here right so 20 plus 5 is 25 we wanted to figure out 35 but we haven't figured out the area here yet so what's the area here the area here is 2 times 5 right from there to there is 5 it's just a box so 2 times 5 is 10 so that's 10 so 20 plus 10 is 30 35 oh six seconds this runner is at uh, 35 meters away so it takes them six seconds to go from here six seconds right the kicker is he goes to the top and comes back so six seconds is the first time he hits 35 meters away from where he was and then what we're going to do is figure out when else is he six seconds away or sorry when else is he 35 meters away so let's figure out the area here this was five times two because six to eight is two divided by 2 which is 5 again so this part is 5 right so that's 40 meters and then we gotta he's got to come back right this is negative velocity which means in the negative direction is it true that the math can answer almost everything almost uh, almost you can quantify almost anything how much do you love ice cream on a scale of 1 to 10 you just quantified your love of ice cream right so let's figure out this is backwards from where he went let's figure out the area here this is again five and from eight to ten is two seconds well that's the same as that right so the area here again is one half times base times height this kills this so that's five right but it's negative five because it's negative velocity right so if you subtract 5 from 40, because that's what the total area was all the way here, right? That's 40 meters that way. 5 meters back, that's 35. So also at 10 seconds, 10 seconds, he's at 35. So it took him 4 seconds to go there and come back again, right? That was the first problem we did. First year of university, uh, a month in, he had this problem, right? You make it look so easy. I wish it was my math teacher. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, uh, it's just I have the background for it, right? And some of these problems aren't easy for me. Like we did one problem where we got it wrong and then we had to figure it out. We knew the answer and we sort of went, okay, what is it about the system that we're not understanding, right? So let me show you. So is that okay? This is, again, we just used our knowledge of physics, what the graph means, and that's really the knowledge aspect of it. There isn't really any mathematics here. You know that this is velocity, that's time, and the area under the graph based on the units, 
meters per second times seconds gives you eliminates the seconds and gives you meters right and then we use just geometry to figure out the area right math is abstract enough to apply to many many situations both real and made up physics moving around in four dimensions etc it can't answer philosophical questions like moral problems it can only quantify uh, quantify not qualify very well said the uh, mask of raven but it can get you to a level where you can with the quantifying whatever system you're looking at you can hopefully make the right decision right this is what uh, uh, if you watch science fiction uh, Vulcans right what is good uh, the, the what's the Vulcan say uh, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few right which I don't agree with I think that's crazy right that's uh, extreme for a form of majority rules right but in certain situations it applies right and in the Vulcan Star Trek it comes up a lot where they have to you know one person has to sacrifice their lives to save a whole planet or something for sure that applies right you can also conclude that it's eight seconds for the entity because eight seconds for the entity because 35 to 40 minus 5 is 4 seconds so half of that uh, is 2 seconds 35 to se oh yeah that's right that's right the only things that I'm from Sweden so the terms and stuff you guys use make me confused yeah and that's the language the natural language right you know how to speak uh, Klingon no I don't <laughs> I know people do <laughs> Let me erase this. Let's do another problem, right? I guess we're just going to do physics, maybe. Unless you have math questions. If you have math questions, lay it on us and we'll try to deal with it, right? So, let's do another one. Here, here's another problem we had. Okay. This was the second problem we dealt with. Can you prove that Ryan Leibold doesn't know? someone's already proved proved it they collected a million bucks I think it was there's a documentary on it I think someone proved it already right I watched the documentary about the uh, Raymond hypothesis and I can't it's about prime numbers I can't remember I think it's about prime numbers I can't remember what it uh, prove uh, I can't remember what it is the documentary is fantastic though fantastic tearjerker really it's a tearjerker no, <laughs> no mask of Raven says no. So here's another problem. It's kinematics. You throw a rock up. Rubik, I've got a class where we're using the dual space of a vector space a lot. Dual space of a vector space. I have a really hard time visualizing what the dual space looks like. Do you have any advice on how to think about it? Dual space, you mean x and y coordinates? x and y coordinates let me know and we'll deal with that first thank you for creating this educational space it is helpful to me i have a love of all sciences but math specifically challenges me in, um, in method hearing explanations is greatly helpful for me my pleasure merrill uh mer merrily human merely human i did it again i said merrily merely human my pleasure man my pleasure uh, raymond hoffa hasn't been proven yet it hasn't been proven yet what was the documentary I saw? I thought it was a Riemann hypothesis. Intelligent blueberry. Chicho, I'm having problems with math in class. Don't suppose if I mention it, you can help me out. I'll try to help you out, intelligent blueberry, for sure. But you're in university, so uh, Mask of Raven might help you out as well, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, so Rubik, are we talking about vectors? Like two, two dimensions? So, so let's assume here. Let's assume we have a ball. Uh, must be thinking of another one must be thinking of another one uh, it's the one where the guy I, I'll try to find it and post it on uh, online uh, on discord channel okay so here's yeah I'm gonna use brown this guy's dying slowly it's the space of maps from a space to itself so you're mapping oh I remember the stuff you're mapping a vector upon a vector let's let me lay out the first level of it and then 
because I haven't done anything like this for a while, long time, if I understand you correctly. Um, it's basically relativistic, I think. Um, I would have to look it up to remember how to do it again. But let me explain vectors to people, and then we can kick it up a notch. Zeno's theory. Zeno's theory. So let's assume we have a ball. Okay. Let's say the ball is traveling in this direction and it's traveling at, let's use simple numbers, 10 meters, oops, 10 meters per second. Okay. It doesn't have to have units. You could just, what about it? Zeno, Zeno's hypothesis. Ten, I don't even know what the Zeno's hypothesis is. 10 meters per second. Okay. Now, assume that there is we want to find the final velocity of this thing uh, if there is another force let's say the wind is blowing so this guy here was a gigantic ball kicking the ball at a goal post right here's a guy goalie right and this guy's mental calculation is trying to do it because there's wind blowing in this direction right at let's say two meters per second okay where is what's the true direction where is this ball going to go because the goalie is going to try to figure out where it's going to go and this guy's hopefully compensated for the win so he can get it in the top corner right so he can score a goal right and they can give balls different types of spins right uh, in pool billiards we call it English you get a twist and the ball goes like this right so what you do is to be able to do this problem you draw your vectors and what you need is an angle right let's assume this is at uh, 40 degrees and let's assume this guy is at um, 15 degrees okay so you draw your vectors you go this is 40 and this well not 40 this guy is 10 right 10 going off the horizontal at 40 degrees and over here you have the wind affecting this guy and the wind is 2 and it's going on off the horizontal at 15 degrees okay let me draw these bigger so you see them a little bit usually you try to make the vectors uh, relative like if this is 10 2 is going to be smaller right you wouldn't make the 2 really big so this guy is 2 and the angle is 15 degrees right so for you the only way to be able to do this you have to break these things down to their x y axes coordinates right so what you end up doing is you draw here let's put our axes here you draw your x-axis you draw your y-axis and what you want to do i'm going to bring a different color in here now let's bring a different color let's bring green how's the green Does this erase easy yeah that should work cool so what we want to do is we want to figure out what the y component of this is and what the x component of that is right and this ends up being just straight up geometry right sokotoa right so this is your x for the ball let's call it xb and yb or bx and by that's a better way of putting it bx and by right so this is bx and by the x component of the ball and the y component of the ball I can really understand the concept of the reflection using vectors. Can you help me with it after you finish? I can really understand the concept of ref reflection using vectors. Can't I can't really understand. I was like, what? I can't really understand the concept of reflection using vectors. Can you? Yeah, we can do it. We finish this. As soon as we finish this, uh, let me know. Here, I'll put a little sign here. Reflections. Lectures, and we'll do okay. 
mask of Raven. I was asking if Raven hypothesis could be proven using Zeno's paradox. Uh, I should think. Uh, I should link you YouTube from 2018 that may explain better than I can explain. If you can link it up uh, on the Discord page, that'd be great. That way, I can take a look at it too later. Uh, Sir Michael Atia, 89 year old mathematician, claims to have solved the 160 year old problem. Really? A Riemann hypothesis. Check this out. So, we want the x component of this. Well, the x component of this, if you use Sokotoa, uh, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cos theta is equal to adjacent. Jeez, I put two two d's adjacent over hypotenuse and tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent right so here's our 90 degree triangle this is 40 degrees opposite over hypotenuse adjacent over hypotenuse so if we want to find this out this guy here we'll do it here and then i'm going to erase a whole bunch make us more room right Oh, Athena proof wasn't great from what I've heard from other mathematicians. Oh, wow, you know of it, Masquerima. That's cool. So this guy becomes cos of 40 degrees is equal to adjacent, which is ball in the x direction divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10. So b of x, if you cross multiply, b of x is equal to 10 cos 40, right? Let's erase this. So b of x is equal to 10 cos 40 degrees. If you use the same thing for sine, for this, this becomes 10 sine of uh, 40 degrees. Okay. Never actually looked at it. Did it use Zeno's? I got to look at what Zeno's paradox is, right? So this is the direction that this guy's going the ball. This is the direction for the y component of the ball. And then we've got to do the same thing here, right? If we do the same thing here, we're going to get the wind in the x direction and the wind in the y direction, right? I believe so. My information could be wrong, though. Keep in mind, I am still learning and absorbing lots of data at once. Cool. Fun to do. So this guy is the same type of thing that happens over here. So this becomes 2 cos of 15, 2 cos of 15, and this becomes 2 sine of 15. So let me put this guy here. We'll put a little arrow, whoop, put it here. And wind in the y direction is 2 sine of 15 degrees, right? But here's the kicker. Here's the kicker, right? We said that you have to give positive and negative depending on which direction things are going, right? Tyler, thanks, Tyler. Appreciate it. I love it. I love, I love doing this, right? So if you're giving positive and negative in certain directions, what we're going to do, we're going to say this way is positive and that way is positive for the y right so this way is positive for the x and that way is positive for the y and anything in going in this direction is going to be negative for the x and going down is going to be negative for the y well this is going in this direction so it's positive for the x that's going in that direction so it's positive for the y that's going in that direction so that's still positive in the x but this guy is going down the wind y is going down right so this is not 2 sine of 15, it's negative 2 sine of 15. Negative 2 sine of 15. Okay. So what we end up doing is this now. If you want to visualize what's happening, we're taking this vector, putting it here, right? And then we're taking this part, putting it right at the end of it. Right, because they're both going the same direction. This part of it is 10 cos 40 degrees. This part is 2 cos, 2 cos 15 degrees. Right? We're gonna put this guy up here going up. 
right? That's 10 sine 40. And then this one is coming down. Whoop! Is going to be negative 2 sine 15. Okay. So what we end up doing now is, hopefully this focuses, there we go. What we end up doing now is adding these guys up, we're going to get a number. We're going to add these guys up and we're going to get a number. Let's do that down here. Okay. So take a look at this. I'm just going to punch in the numbers. I got to do it with the, on the computer. So let me punch these in on the computer. You guys can do it as well. Right. So we're going to do, let's do this one. Cos of 40, 40 cos times 10. Right. I should even model. So this part here, let's draw it here. This guy is 7.66. We're going to take it to two decimal places. 7.66 meters per second. I should have just said meter. Well, you can do it per second, right? And then this part, let's figure out what this part is. Cos 15 times 2. 15 cos. Did I do? Yeah, it was cos. Cos times 2. Boop. Is 1.93. 1.93 right so this whole thing is these two guys added up right which is going to be plus 7.66 7.66 which is 9.59 so let me erase this so it's not confusing so both of those added up is 9.59 9.59 Okay, let's combine this and the wind is giving it more power. Do you know who Mr. Gerti is? No, I don't. I'm not sure if that's directed at me or not. Okay, let's do this one. This one is going to be 40 sine 40 times 10. So let's take 40 sine times 10 is going to be 6.43. So 6.43, 6.43 minus, because that's going down, uh, 15 sine, 15 sine times 2 minus 0 0.52, 0 0.52. So this part here is going to be uh, minus six point. Four, three, which is 5.91 so the total in this direction ends up being which is really going to be here if you're going to look at it with vectors because those two guys kill each other is going to be 5.91 5.91 okay I really struggle with math because I'm dyslexic I struggle with reading because I have a little bit of dyslexia as it comes out when it comes to trying to pronounce names and reading things backwards. People have noticed when I read chat, sometimes they have to correct me from what I read, right? It's just a little bit of a struggle, a little bit more effort from my part uh, that I have to put in. And I've taught, I've taught people with, who have this, this sex, they have some severe, some not. Um, granddad, speak up, please. <laughs> I'm assuming you're not um what do you call it uh you might be here just to play but just in case just in case you're legit you got math problems because you got dyslexia uh, um, put the effort in i've worked with students that ha have had that problem and they excel they can excel right so all you got to do now is just do the pythagorean theorem right actually that goes to here i guess It goes there. It's ASMR. And the headphones are your friend. Sokotoa. Like. Yeah. It's supposed to be chill. It's supposed to be chill. So if we do this, try to figure out the magnitude of this thing, we're just going to do Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So it's going to be 9.59 squared plus 5.91 squared is equal to C squared. So let's just do that. Okay, 
9.59 squared, 9.59 this is a failed math because of squared. Why did you fail math? Plus 5.11 squared equals that 126.90. So this becomes 126.90 is equal to c squared. So c is equal to the square root of that, right? Because of what did you say? Because of circles i got an eight head up the hmm Boop. you got an eight let's check it out square root that mm, i think it should be more than eight you got 11.26 this the, that's the magnitude here right so the ball's traveling faster than this guy kicked it thanks to the wind power right now you could figure out what the angle is as well right because the angle is going to be going down now it's going to be less than 40 degrees and the way you figure that out is you're going to use sokotoa again okay so the way you do that is Let's just use 10, I guess. 10 theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 6.43 divided by 9.59. So theta is equal to 10 inverse of that doohickey, whatever that is. Let's do it. Could you help me with topics 12.11 of the a level spectrum modeling with differentials please i'm really struggling with them oh harvey I, I i couldn't help you on that i haven't done that stuff for a long time modeling with differential equations or integration and stuff like this at some point i will get back into it and we will definitely hold live streams uh, for it but right now specifically just focusing on i know brother i know for, you know how many people have had that have asked me to teach them calculus uh, and I will at some point but I can't do it right now it's too much on my plate to for me to go learn relearn calculus 33.84 degrees 33.84 degrees so this angle now is 33.84 degrees so the guy kicked it this way the wind is pushing it this way so the ball is actually gonna go boop, according to my diagram this angle the true motion of the angle is 33.84 33.84 degrees and it's going to be traveling at 11.26 meters per second okay can we go back and watch your old streams yeah oh i had uh I'm just gonna leave this up so you take a look I'm just gonna catch up with the chat uh, dang yeah am I on the good or naughty list I have no idea I don't have a good and naughty list you're either in my class or you're out right I had that issue in school too did it uh, the she said so you would just like to do complete a square we have completed square a lot of I've done a few videos on completing the square by the way if you do chicho completing the square we can do one uh but i want to do reflections right now because uh i forget who it was that asks for it uh, the gc se exam board always increased the difficulty of exams in my mocks i was getting b's constantly i got i only got a c and it was extremely tough uh, can we go back watch yep yo man i respect your love for math good stuff mike hey man i hate english what about you writing the same paragraph over and over again is in the exact same uh mike i feel you i did poorly in english in in school okay i really did um and at university i wasn't good at english uh, but when i grew up when i got older i realized that i had to be uh, i had to relearn english how to communicate properly so 
I started writing I started blogging and man yeah you have to have a, uh, a pretty thick skin to be able to take all that criticism of posting stuff up and people say oh this is garbage this is, your writing is horrendous so I had to relearn English teach myself and I reached it to a level where you know I'm not bad in expressing my opinions I highly recommend uh, even if you're not enjoying it in school and even if you're out of school and you're not good at it learn how to do learn how to read and write properly it it's really important spider beans how you doing how's life doing good brother doing good uh, have you considered putting all of your teaching segments into a sequence and uploading them uh, to a hosting source like YouTube I'm already on there uh, twitch from uh, twitch from my understanding removes videos after a time it would seem to me that you are teaching universal mechanics that rarely change I could see them used often for further personal uh, merely human do chicho uh, go to my youtube channel i have i don't know 300 plus math videos online that i started creating in 2007. i've categorized some of it there's i got playlists where we do mathematics of food and farming we do mathematics of graphic design we do a whole bunch of mathematics we go through uh, the real number set we start i start off with the real number set but i'm going to kick it back a notch i got another set of stuff coming up we've got a whole series on trigonometry that we're halfway through trigonometry grade 12 i got 300 plus videos we're up to we're close to 800 videos on youtube it's got to be at least 400 videos on mathematics uh, check out my youtube channel and i specifically created a channel called math and real life a website and a channel called math and real life that you can see i haven't updated that one that doesn't contain all my recent or let's say recent last five years of videos of mathematics uh, and i created another channel called 420 math and a website called 420math.com if you go there it has 200 plus videos and that's in support of organizations that we're trying to end prohibition yeah so i have a lot of content online i plan on creating modules and teaching all of high school mathematics uh, we're about a third of the way through a quarter of the way through we've got another 10 years 15 20 years to go I don't believe in the concept of uh, thick skin I think that it promotes a world of unfeeling and human behavior um, me and a human I not for me like for me if I had to grow thick skin because I would write stuff and people would criticize what I wrote some people unjustly because they didn't like what I wrote some people would send me feedback because the way I expressed myself was incorrect right so initially I have to be able to filter out the garbage criticism from the good criticism right and that took a little bit of getting used to I call that thick skin okay uh, for me it is because I, initially I was oh man I can't believe I got these wrong and whatnot I struggle with adding subtracting algebraic uh, fractions I think it's really cool you're doing math tutorials on twitch yeah I like it it's where you know it's where the students are so I can't I come to them right Lance left hook oh it's ASMR do you mind to quickly go through basic trigonometry sometime uh, I'm ashamed to admit that I totally forgot uh, about it and wiki at the time didn't help when I was in a hurry I forgot all about cosine sine tan blah 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 I know it's easy uh, Lance it's not necessarily easy once you know it it's easy right but when you're trying to learn something it's not easy and it's not supposed to be oh Tyler thank you I forgot about my YouTube the YouTube command yes thank you for that by the way uh, so trig let me put this up so we know we're gonna do trig as well trig oops trig okay I'm gonna erase this I'm gonna deal with reflections are you always this chill you're kind of the Bob Ross of <laughs> yeah I've been called the Bob Ross of math a few times <laughs> over the years <laughs> really <laughs> Bob Ross of math and Bob Ross of comic books and huge respect to Bob Ross so I take it as a huge compliment 
I take it as a huge compliment. Am I always this chill? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I have videos on YouTube. Initially, the videos I loaded on YouTube were sort of graffiti style. I was taking my tripod, uh, big chalk, and going out into the city and finding walls and doing graffiti style of mathematics. Fast paced because I had to be in and out because people didn't like gigantic math pieces on their walls. Even though it was chalk, they were like, they were freaking out, right? I had to take them down a couple of times. I got caught, I got busted. Let's paint a pretty little coast <laughs> over here. <laughs> For sure we do. Okay, I'm gonna take this down. So reflection, I, I'm not 100% sure um, what you mean by reflection, but let's, let's talk about this. Because this is something we use in uh, geophysics, right? When you do seismics and radar surveys and whatnot. So I forget who it was that asked uh, to do this. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da 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 -da. Reflections, reflections. Um, okay, I don't know where it is, but if you're still here, um, I'm going to lay something down. Let me know if this is what you want us to talk about. To me, your speaking method instills a sense of confidence in your knowledge to me. This makes the learning here feel secure and reasonable. I very much like this method of speaking. Ah, thanks, merely human. Thanks, merely human. I try. Sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes my students, I, you know, I write down the wrong thing. And my students correct me or you guys correct me. And I go, oops, you know, erase it. But one thing with learning things is, and is that you have to have the belief and and the understanding. It's not even belief; it's the fact that if you put the time in, you will learn it, right? So all that's required is to put the time in, uh, like the bounce of a ball, like the bounce of a ball. We can do a ball bouncing question. I like those. But let's let me lay down the reflection and the person that brought it up i'll put it down here you let us know if this is what you're what you want us to focus on the ref reflection and refraction that's what i'm thinking about basically states if you have a surface here and if you have a light lay, ray of light coming in or sound coming in vibrations coming in or billiard ball coming in right because this could be map view looking at a pool table right boom then this will bounce at an incident angle right it's just physics and if this is a medium where light is penetrating then there's you know depending on the density of the medium if this is uh if this is going down and it's less dense let's make it more dense okay if uh, if it's transparent, is it trans translucent? I forget what the word is. If this is more dense than that, then the beam will reflect this way. If the bottom is less dense than the top, then it will go this way. Right? Let me know if this is what you want us to talk about and what aspect of it you want us to talk about. Let's deal with trig. Okay. Here's a triangle. Let's call this angle theta. Let's call A and B the legs of a right angle triangle. And let's call C the hypotenuse. Okay. Now, if you do um, trigonometry, who was it that wanted to know trick, 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 trick? Da, 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 da. Oh, algebraic functions. Adding, subtracting, algebraic functions. Let me write this down here. Maybe we do that too. Uh, polynomials, algebraic functions. I'll break functions. Add, subtract. Add, subtract. Okay. Just little notes for myself. Uh, who was it that asked about the trigonometry? Anyway, I hope you're still here. If you want to know about trig, I've got a whole bunch of videos on trig. There's two different types of trig videos I have up, okay? 
a bunch of videos that I did in the late 2000s in 2009 to well, it's probably 2007 2000 2008 2009 where we did trigonometry those are the language of mathematics stuff right and that goes into the basic Sokotoa sine cosine tangent functions and Pythagorean theorem and stuff like this if you want more higher level trig uh, I got an ASMR math series out there where we're going to what trigonometry is really about which is really talking about uh, trying to analyze a circle right yes this is what I'm talking about and also do we need to use the surface normal oh so this is what we're talking about yeah okay yeah you do so basically this is more physics related than math related well it is math but it's applied mathematics how do you calculate the length between the earth and a star uh and a star you look at the motion you use triangulation the angle and i forget what we did because uh, i took the stuff at university geophysics right but basically i think you do this let me do a little thing if this is the earth right we're here looking out in the stars there and there you watch the motion of a star over time and you measure the angle and you use trigonometry Dante how you doing how's life I would have to look it up to do further gunnery trolls uh, not yet we had a couple of people uh, or yeah a couple of people showed up that might have gone in that direction but we talked them down <laughs> I think I hope anyway <laughs> they, they, they went away they went away I haven't banned anyone yet so trigonometry is this here let's talk about trig oh hold on we're going to talk about this uh the normal uh yes this is what i'm talking about and also do we need to use the surface normal yeah you need you need this guy basically all right okay and the angle of incident i think you measure it from the normal do you not i'm going to try your youtube tomorrow thank you it's so useful yeah Lance let me and let me know I'm pretty active on YouTube and on Twitch as well uh, during the live streams anyway uh, if you have questions just post a comment on any video that you have a question on as long as the YouTube's spam filters don't zap things because they do uh, they take out legit comments uh, if they notify me I'll definitely reply and if and if I don't reply send another message I'll try to reply ASAP okay but I think the the angles are here this is uh the incident angle is here I forget the terminology by the way uh Merrill Max the example I have is moving ball that we want to bounce off a wall or other object okay what's the then what's the example so we've got a ball here that's going in at a certain angle is it not Maro, Maro, Marox, to Maro, Marox, to. So if you have this, usually you have an angle that this guy goes in, and it has to come out at the same angle. Okay, it has to come out at the same angle. So what you end up having to do is calculating this angle and then figuring out that angle, right? Unless there is English spins on the ball and that totally changes the game so for example if you have let's assume this is a surface and you have this ball coming in let's assume the ball has a spin like this right so if the ball is spinning like this and this is what you got to keep in mind when you're playing pool I used to be pretty pretty good at pool I could clean the table right I used to uh, be able to go to pool halls or clubs and stuff and drink for free you play for drinks and you drink for free all night right so you can give the ball a spin let's say you hit it with a cue stick here right give it a spin this way when the ball hits this surface here if there is friction involved and in real life there is friction involved because the ball is spinning this way it catches here and instead of reflecting off the normal at the same angle what it does it gives it a spin and it goes the angle becomes greater right 
So it really depends what type of problems you're working with. This is very complicated to figure out. Very complicated. I don't even remember how to figure this stuff out when there's more of an angle it is. Uh, is it the uh, is it the remaining motion? What do you mean by remaining motion? What's what's the remaining motion? Like there's like these types of situations you can also have like this, right? You could have one ball, ball one and ball two, right? They come together, they hit each other, and they travel as one unit. And if this is, let's say, 10, this is 5, the weight of this is, let's say they have the same weight, mass, right? Then this ball is going to travel in this direction if they stick together, right? Like the amount of left over when it hits the surface. Like the amount left over when it hits the surface. It is the remaining motion remaining motion the amount the amount left over when it hits the surface the amount left over so do you have a problem uh, that you can write out for us that you're given that way I can read the problem and try to figure out what it is uh, that we're talking about uh, like the amount left over when it hits the surface the amount left over when it hits the surface there's going to be uh are you talking about absorption where some of the energy is lost into the surface so if this guy's coming in at let's say 10 and is bouncing back at eight then you lost two in the bounce and that's usually just heat I would basically have to know exactly what type of problem we're talking about right until you and these guys you could have two different situations you could have them sticking together and going off that way or you could have them bouncing you know ball one goes this way ball two goes this way what's their motion and stuff like that but there's a whole bunch of variables we need to know for this this is conservation of energy when that happens and that's usually conservation of energy as well and conservation of momentum problems okay let's do trig for a second let's finish off the trig how's our timing oh not bad not bad let's do a little bit of trig so we deal with that okay here take a look at trig here's three pens let me do this and bring out the thing so I got the thing set up properly. So let's assume we have this, right? Here's a triangle, okay? Triangle means a polygon with three different angles, right? Closed polygon. So just imagine if we had this triangle, right? Now I'm going to <laughs> try not to show the logos and stuff, but they got the logo all over this thing, right? Uh, I wish I had pens here or drumsticks here that I've done with before, right? So take a look at this. If I decrease this angle here, right, which side is getting smaller? It's this side, right? If I decrease this angle here, this side is getting smaller. I will search if I have an example that expresses what I mean. Okay, awesome. That'd be great. So the way it works is this, with a triangle, an angle controls the opposite side of a triangle. So this angle, if I draw this triangle, check this out. If I draw this triangle, this angle controls that side, this angle controls that side, and that angle controls that side, okay? Straight up triangle, right? So if you know this, just from this principle, I could give you a triangle and ask you, if the triangle is a legitimate triangle. So for example, if I give you this triangle, I say this is uh, 50 degrees, this is 40 degrees, and this is 90 degrees, okay? And one of the other things, here's a properties of a triangle. Sum of angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees, okay? The sum of the angles in a triangle on Euclidean geometry, which is 
flat surface geometry has to equal 180 degrees. So if I draw any triangle, here's a whole bunch of triangles. All right? This plus this plus this is 180. This plus this plus this is 180. That plus that plus plus is 180. That plus that plus is 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. Some of the angles in a triangle have to equal 180 degrees. Period. Done. Right? Now, take a look at this. So I drew a triangle here for you. And the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. Right? And then I gave you sides for the angles. I said this is 6, this is 5, this is 9. Okay? The principle we have is this. An angle controls the opposite side, right? So this angle controls that side, that angle controls that side, that angle controls this side, the whole side, right? I could ask you a question. Is this triangle a legitimate triangle? Could it be a legitimate triangle? And the answer, obviously I gave you one that isn't, so I could prove a point, right? This triangle is not a legitimate triangle. And here's the reason why, right? Sign law, sign law. Here's the reason why, right? If an angle controls the opposite side, so this angle, this angle controls this side, right? So over here, this angle controls this side, which is the five. This angle controls this side, which is the six. And this angle controls this side, which is the nine. Now the biggest angle is 90 degrees and that's across from the largest side that's legit and then we've got the smallest angle is across from the side that's six and the mid-size angle the one that's between 90 and 40 is 50 degrees controlling five this cannot be a legitimate triangle because if this is the smallest angle and if it controls the opposite side this has to be the smallest side right so if i made this one a five and this one a six and i asked you if this triangle was a legitimate triangle you would say could be a legitimate triangle the other one was absolutely not a legitimate triangle okay illegitimate triangle out of here right is it legitimate this one could be legitimate now right so keeping that in mind which is an angle controls the opposite side, right? I'm gonna erase this guy as well. If I give you a right angle triangle, all of a sudden we have three other equations that pop up here, right? Another equation we have is for a right angle triangle, actually we've got four equations, but we'll do them one at a time, right? So this is our first property of a triangle. This is any triangle. The sum of the angles in a triangle have to equal 180 degrees, right? If I call this beta, yeah, let's not call it beta because people might get confused with that. Let's call it alpha. Uh, let's call it, no, we don't want to call it alpha. Uh, I guess we could call it alpha. What should we call it alpha? Let's call this W and let's call that Z. Just simplify things so we don't have any problems, right? So if I give you this triangle, it's a right angle triangle. Now for right angle triangles, you have the following four equations you can use. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, okay? And that's straight up Pythagorean theorem, which says for any right angle triangle, the two legs of the triangle squared added up equal to the third leg squared, right? It's pretty common to pair A and alpha, B with beta. Yeah, I put that one theta, I <laughs> know. <laughs> see with gamma see what goes with gamma racer kill by the way hi racer kill i didn't realize c with with gamma but we're just going to call it w and z it doesn't make a difference right the beta i should have put here that should be alpha and then beta and then gamma what's the symbol for gamma gamma is this i forget pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared so if i give you any right angle triangle as long as you have 
or angle C, opposite of C. Yeah, you know what? Let's call it that. Here, we'll do this. We'll keep it, and I really dislike the convention they use, by the way. I don't, personally, it's not my favorite, but basically what they do, they say the capital letters are the angles, and the small case letters are the sides, right? Yeah. That's what they do. Here, I'll make the C a little bit smaller so it shows as a small C, right? Now, when it comes to this situation, and by the way, for any triangle, if you have three of the pieces of information, because there's six unknowns in a triangle, there's three angles and three sides, right? If you have three of the bits of information, one of them has to be a side, you can find everything else. I think small and capital is good, but it's annoying uh, for letters like C. It's very annoying for letters like C. <laughs> very annoying because C looks just like C, except for, si except for size. I don't like it personally, but it's really, it's the convention that for some reason it's been being used for the last 15 years or so, which is weird, right? So if I give you any right angle triangle or any triangle really and if I give you that one two five X W Z and if I ask you to find this you can do it if I give you this triangle right angle triangle and I say five seven two I didn't give you any angles except for the 90 oh I don't need to even give you that one oh that's the same as that one uh, I want to give you that one uh, Actually, this doesn't even have to be right angle triangles. You could figure that one out, right? But if I give you this, here, let's call this 50 degrees, and that's 90. You could figure out that stuff. If I give you, here, kill that. If I give you this, you can figure out the rest. But if I give you this, uh, 40, if the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180, then 180 minus 90, because that's 90, is 90, minus 40, it makes this 50. If I give you this three, you can't figure out this triangle because you don't have um, the scale, right? You don't have a distance. You don't have a length, okay? So as long as there's six bits of information in a triangle, three sides and three angles, as long as you have three of them, one of them being a side, you can figure out all the rest, right? So for a right angle triangle, Pythagorean theorem says this, the legs of the triangle, and the legs are the ones that connect up to give you the 90 degrees, the legs of the triangle, each one squared out of together is the hypotenuse squared. The other three angles give triangles up to scale, so you know the ratio. Yeah, you know the ratio. That's it, ratio kill, thank you for the clarification. So check this out, if I give you a triangle if I say this is 30 degrees if that's 40 degrees 30 and 40 is 70 degrees right subtract that from 180 so this would have to be 110 degrees right if we have this triangle the ratios of the sides we know right because no matter how small or how big this is the ratios side a B and C a over B will always be the same. Here's another one. And if I said this is the same angles, 30, 40, and 110 degrees, and this is X, Y, Z, then A over B has to equal to X over Y. Z over Y has to equal C over B. Right? So proportions matter as well and they come in very very handy okay triangles have very they got some pretty cool features to them they got pretty cool features to them. here's the trigonometry aspect of the formulas right sine theta which is basically they give you the sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent okay now what does this mean 
This means the following. The theta is the angle where you're at. And relative to the angle, that's what the opposite and the hypotenuse and the adjacent are going to be. The hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degrees, right? So if the theta is here, then sine of B, sine of B is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite from B is B over the hypotenuse is C. Cos of B is equal to you put yourself, whenever you're giving me an angle, just imagine yourself putting yourself there and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So that would be A over C because that's the adjacent over C. Now, if you put yourself here, this C, the hypotenuse is also adjacent to B, which is a little confusing when you, they call it adjacent over hypotenuse. C is also adjacent to B, but C already has a name. It's called the hypotenuse. So you don't refer to that as the adjacent or the opposite. That's always the hypotenuse. I still don't like this. There being 360 total degrees. It feels like a product of the uh, imperial system. It's, uh, you mean for a full circle, 360 degrees? It's based on the sun. It's based on, I looked into this a while ago, someone asked this question before and we looked into it and there was a reason for it, uh, which was a pretty legit reason. Uh, I forget what it was. Is it based on the sun? Okay. So cos of B is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, A over C. Tan of B, tan of B is going to be opposite over adjacent so you put yourself at b and you go opposite b over a b over a on the same note one reason is that it's highly divisible yeah would you rather it be two pi <laughs> it is radians two pi radians right and two pi comes in way more handy than 360 degrees right like radians is way better than degrees but degrees because we've been taught forever we just relate to degrees better, right? For in grade 12, they change it up to, or grade 11, if you're lucky, you get a teacher, they introduce pi, and all of a sudden you're like, what? Yeah, the old mathematicians looked at the sun and figured that the sun took approximately 360 days around us. Is that what it was? That's simple as that? Damn, that's a stupid reason to make a circle 360 degrees. But I guess at the time it worked, you didn't have calculator, you gotta keep in mind, you didn't have calculators way back then, right? So you had to simplify things as best as you could. The more you know, the more you know, the more you realize how ridiculous our world is, right? Let's say we wanted to find sine, cos, and tan of angle A. So if you go sine of A, sine of A, sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So what you do is you put yourself on A, Oops, you put yourself at A and you go, what's opposite from A? From here, the opposite is here and the hypotenuse is here. So sine of A is A over C. Cos of A, oops, cos of A is B over C. And tan of A is A over B. Now take a look at this, A over C. Where else do we have A over C? A over C. So what that tells us is cos of B is equal to sine of A, right? These are sort of properties that pop up. Livia, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome to the live stream, mathematics, right? B over C, oh, B over C. So sine of B is also equal to cos of A, right? This is some stuff that we delved into during our trigonometry playlist, right? Uh, when we're dealing with more how they're related to circles and whatnot, right? So this is what Sokotoa represents. And the best way to learn is to do a problem. So let's do a problem. That way you'll see, or a couple of problems, you'll see how this plays out with real numbers, right? Um, 
Oh, I raised the 10? No, I didn't raise the 10. Cool. So let's assume we had the following triangle and we wanted to find, we wanted to solve the triangle. Whenever they say solve a triangle, they mean find all six properties of that triangle. Okay. So here's question one. And we're only going to deal with right angle triangles. Okay. So I've given you a right angle triangle. Let's assume I make this a 10 and I make this 60 degrees. Okay. I want you to find X, Y, and Z. Okay. Perfect timing. I'm covering exactly the same topic now. Awesome, Lydia. I hope it helps. Here's an example, right? So what they would say for this, they would say solve the triangle. Solve this triangle. Okay. Apologies about my writing. It's, I write like a scribbly, right? So my question to you is, and whenever you're doing these types of problems, you should ask yourself, what do you want to solve for first? Right now we have choices. We could solve for any of these first, right? Sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you have to solve for one before you can move on to the other two, okay? But right now, ask yourself, which one do we want to solve for first? Okay, have you figured it out? Do you know? <laughs> a bust out calculator. I've actually made it 60 degrees because that's a special triangle. We know the ratios. We can actually do this without a calculator. Okay. It's easy. Z. Z. Very good, right? El alley cat. Because that's the easiest one to figure out. Why is it the easiest one to figure out? Because we have five formulas, right? That we use for right angle triangles. Two, three, four, five, right? Well, four formulas that only work for right angle triangles and one formula that works for all triangles, right? The first formula says the sum of the angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Doesn't make a difference what type of triangle you have. As long as it's a flat surface triangle, you can figure it out. It follows this principle, right? So some of the angles, this angle plus that angle plus that angle has to equal 180 degrees. Now, a lot of people do this. They always add, because this is a right angle, that's 90 degrees. They always add 90 degrees to 60 degrees and then subtract from 180. If you know this is 90 degrees, 180 degrees minus 90 is 90. So whenever you have a right angle triangle, if it's a right angle triangle, the sum of the other two angles has to equal 90 degrees. So you don't have to add this to this and then subtract from 180. You just have to go, oh, if this is a 90 degree triangle, then this plus this has to equal 90. So 90 minus 60, Z is 30, right? So we figured out Z. This is 30 degrees. That was easy. Okay. Now we have a choice. We had a choice before, but because we only got two sides left, our choice is, do we want to solve for X first or Y first? Which one do we want to solve first? X or Y? X or Y? What should we solve first? Difficult choice? Should we choose one? Let's start out with the lowest alphabet, right? X. Let's solve for X first. So if you're going to solve for X first, opposite. Opposite which one? Here's the key, right? If you're going to solve for X, you have all three angles, right? So Z was 30. Let me put this here so we know it's this angle here. It's not sitting out in the middle of the triangle. 30 degrees, right? X is easier if you know sine of 30. Yeah. Y is the same. It's going to be the same, right? But let's assume we want to solve for X. That's your first question. The decision or your first dilemma. Which one do you want to solve for first? Or which one can you solve for first? And then when you figure out it's X you want to solve for, you're going to ask yourself, 
do I want to use 60 degrees or do I want to use 30 degrees because you can use both of them right now okay if you're gonna use 30 degrees you ask yourself what's X what's the position of X it will be half it won't be half what's the position of X relative to 30 well X is opposite from 30 so once you decide you want to solve for this and then you decide you want to use 30 degrees take your pen and go I'm at 30 degrees and I'm gonna solve for X so what's the position of X relative to 30 that's opposite and what length do I have right now well I have the hypotenuse so I'm looking for something that has opposite and hypotenuse if I'm going to use 30 opposite of hypotenuse is sine so this would be sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite opposite X over 10 okay and if you cross multiply like looking at the horizon like looking at the horizon you cross multiply this up so x is equal to 10 sine of 30 and sine of 30 is a special triangle 30 60 90 1 square root of 3 2 sine of 30 is 1 over 2 so this would be 10 times 1 over 2 you can punch in your calculator if you want which is 5 so you just figured this out that's five okay now keep in mind you could have used 60 degrees to find x here i'll keep that one up the special triangle yeah special triangle is just a ratio it's a set ratio it works right we talk a lot about this in the trick playlist if this is 30 degrees that's 60 degrees that's 90 the ratios of the size are these so let's assume we're not going to use the 30 degrees we're going to try to find let's assume we haven't found this yet we want to find x but we're going to use 60 degrees to find x and personally i usually always use the information they've given me instead of the information i've calculated to do the next calculation just in case i made a mistake calculating this then the mistake doesn't carry over to the next problem right to the next unknown you need to solve for so if i want to solve for x i'm going to use the 60 degree angle so i'm going to put myself at 60 degrees right and i'm going to say okay what side do i have well we have the hypotenuse so i'm looking for it's going to be one of these guys because they both have hypotenuse in them it's not going to be 10 because it doesn't have hypotenuse so i have the hypotenuse and what's x relative to 60 it's the adjacent relative to 60 so I have to use cosine so this becomes cos of 60 degrees is equal to adjacent adjacent x over 10 cross multiply x is 10 cosine of 60 okay what's cosine of 60 you put it here cosine of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse 1 over 2 so this becomes 10 times 1 over 2 which is equal to 5 this is equal to 5 right and you notice cosine of 60 is the same thing as sine of 30 right these are properties that show up cool I hope that's okay I talk like mad in this stream craziness craziness fun stuff though and trigonometry is ridiculously important it's really ridiculously important once you know how to solve use Sokotoa, the Pythagorean theorem, the sum of the angles 180 degrees. Uh, two months of grade eight and nine, you'll ace, okay? And you're set up for math 11 and math 12, and you begin to have a way better appreciation for what all of this stuff means, and it's ratios, okay? Livia, thumbs up. It's ratios of one side relative to another side let me explain to you what that means okay I'm gonna erase these and if you do need the stuff you can definitely on the video we're gonna load it on YouTube and it'll be available on Twitch I think for a couple of weeks you can definitely take screenshots of it if you learn basics of this it's so easy to solve all problems yeah basically a lot of problems all right so take a look at this I'm gonna erase these guys now all of this 
this down. What was the other one? Algebraic functions, adding and subtracting. Oh, those ones. We didn't get to those ones. If you're still here, the person that asked for algebraic functions, let me know. We'll do Speedy Gonzalez stuff. Uh, until then, let me show you where this can be or some of the other questions uh, you can use. Very useful in real life. Useful if you're going to chop down a tree. Useful in triangulation. Useful uh, useful in chopping down a tree. Useful in trying to do circular motion. Useful in uh, cyclic functions. Useful in trying to understand how light waves and sound waves work. Useful in trying to understand how our economic system works. How stocks behave and uh, the business cycle. It, it's ridiculously important. Right? So take a look at this. Um, here's our triangle here's 90 degrees right if I say this is 30 degrees and here's another triangle oops and I say this is 90 degrees and I say this is 30 degrees right I say this is 5 and this is X and I say this is 6 and this is Y and I say this is W and that's Z right Did I give you too much info? Do I give you too much info? Actually, I even gave you too much info to a certain degree. I think I said algebraic functions, but I mean functions minus fractions. Tomato, tomato, am I right? To a certain degree. Um, here's what you can do, right? Here, let me erase this. Let me do it simpler to a certain degree. Let's say I drew this, right? And I said, this is 90 degrees. So what you have right now, because these two triangles, this triangle, right, and this triangle have the same angles in them, they're called proportional. So you could always find out what this side is. Because what you would do is, oh, you need some one other thing here. You need a total distance here. Let's call this 15, right? What you could do is say, do we need that one? Oh, we need this guy. Hold on, we need this guy. Let's say this guy. Uh, uh, we do need. Uh, I'm trying to do the speedy Gonzalez, so I'm lose. I'm uh, what do you call it? Forgetting a little little parts of it. No, sun drill. I use it for geolocation, Cartesian coordinates. No. Yeah, yeah. With uh, we did a lot in geophysics when we were trying to place ourselves with the data where it was going, right? So if this distance here is four and six, and this distance over here is four, we want to find W. If these have the same angles, right? Because that's the same angle as this, they're proportional triangles. All you would do is say, oh, five over six, or I would do it this way personally. I go five over W because they represent the same side over w has to equal this distance divided by that distance which is 6 over 10 and then you just cross multiply and figure out what w is so 50 is equal to 6 w divided by 6 so w is equal to 325 25 over 3 that's the distance here 25 over 3 which is um, seven and no sorry uh six and uh, a third right derivation and integrals are fun integrals oh i miss those from school do you miss them how about a little calculus uh, derivatives also statistics probably base theorem oh base theorem i looked at base theorem forever 8.333 oh yeah 8.33 divided by three not six, eight point three 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 three. Right. Thank you, Keegan. <laughs> right. um, we've done a little bit of stats. Uh, we've done. We haven't really done calculus. I'm not really touching calculus right now. Okay. Uh, when it comes to algebraic functions, um, if I'm thinking about it the right way, functions minus fractions. So let's assume we have something like this. Uh, the derivative of f x. <laughs> I studied base theorem for a semester. Oh, it's crazy. I haven't looked at base theorem. I don't even remember what it is. 
when I was in grade four, I was struggling with multiplication. I had a sub teacher once and she taught me lattice multiplication, which instantly stuck. And I use it, use it to this day. Is there any other methods to work out long division uh, that you know of? Because long division still doesn't stick. Even if you just drop the method, I can Google it. Uh, you know what? I just use long division. If I'm using numbers, if you're using polynomials, if you're dividing polynomials, use synthetic division. But long division, the only reason it didn't stick is because maybe they didn't teach it to you probably, properly. I checked on your YouTube and subscribe. I'm glad I found your stream. Looking forward to future streams. Have a good night. Good night, Lance. Thanks for popping by. Thanks for the sub. And we're going to do at least two of these uh, math streams a month. Uh, so far, we've been doing one a week, really. Okay. <laughs> Look at the functions. <laughs> Young Jeffrey. <laughs> Twist, Mike. How are you doing? Here's algebraic functions, uh, algebraic expressions, if you want to deal with them. 2x minus 6 over... 5 minus 3x plus 2 over, I don't know, 6. Is this the type of stuff we're talking about? How's it going? Going good. We're doing mathematics, so life is sweet. Mad, mad uh, steering. Ah, thank you for the, uh, for the bits, brother. Or sister, of course. Keegan. Thank you. I'm out. Good night. Good night, man. Good night. Cheers, reward to three others in chat nice 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 thank you for that what's interesting is the enormous theorem then with the, i have no idea what that is <laughs> yeah in high school i struggled with those now take a look at this this is just adding subtracting fractions and this is something that takes people out of the math game really it's one of the first places that people struggle with like i've i've done this with students for the last two decades right if I find them, you know, if they're not paying attention or they're struggling with stuff and they need a little booster, if they need a little engagement, I need to explain to them what math is, which is just a language, right? I always ask students, what's the one thing you hate about mathematics, right? More than 50% of the time, because I'm dealing with high school kids, they say, I hate fractions, right? So for me, as soon as they say I hate fractions, Mr. What Bitcoin? Yeah, this is this is where I usually drop out. Yeah. When when they say tell your students to solve this, <laughs> B3 plus B3. You need three equations for that, Sundro. Right? So whenever they tell me they hate fractions, I go, okay, so if you don't like fractions, that means you can never eat half an apple. Because a half an apple is a fraction, is half of an apple. That means you're going to go walk around your life, your whole existence, dealing with just whole numbers, right? And they're like, what? And I expand this a little bit further, right? So fractions is basically, name of the game is, and adding and subtracting fractions, by the way, it's harder than multiplying and dividing fractions. Multiplying and dividing is easier than adding and subtracting. I'll do three million problems just to get it. <laughs> so when you're doing these types of things name of the game is you need a common denominator and if you've already done the first introduction to fractions the common denominator for this is and by the way if you guys are struggling with fractions let me know and i'll show you how to deal with fractions in the next stream okay i'll lay it out for you the way i teach you from the base down or base up because of common denominator common denominator what is the common denominator common denominator you extract out through breaking these numbers down their prime factors you're looking for the smallest number that both five and six divide into and this is the way you do it lcd let's go yeah the lowest common denominator right you can also refer to it instead of a third uh they like that with a three that goes to infinity that totally makes sense yeah ridiculous right crazy because they give calculators to kids in elementary school so they know how they know how to be a monkey and push numbers into a calculator and half the time they push in, punch it in wrong and they don't have no idea how to deal with fraction which is insane right here let me show you how to do this and then I'll kick it back a notch and I'll show you how you can find the common denominator okay while we're at this right now so common denominator for this would be 30 what's the smallest number that but five and six go into evenly 
right? 30. You ask yourself, what did you multiply 5 by to give you 30? You multiply 5 by 6. And you, by the way, the common denominator could always be both of these things multiplied together. But you don't want to do that because the numbers could become extremely large. If you had a smaller common denominator, better, right? Smaller numbers are easier to deal with than larger numbers. So you multiply this whole thing by 6. So this becomes 12x minus 36. And then you got a minus. Whenever you have a minus, put everything else after the minus sign in brackets. I'm lazy. I just always use the product. Of the, don't do it dice power. It becomes way harder. I'll show you after this one. What did you multiply 6 by to give you 30? You multiply by 5. So 5 multiplies everything here. Now, when you have a minus sign, again, put everything in brackets. So 5 times that is 15x plus 10. And then what you do is, this negative sign affects both of those. So this becomes 30, that's 12x minus 36 minus 15x minus 10. And then you just combine your like terms, right? So 12x minus 15x is negative 3x. 36 minus 10 is negative 40. 46 divided by 30. Okay, that's it. My teacher used to push me in school because I was able to do the work in my head. I explained that the extra steps felt redundant to me and a wasted time. The only limited resource we actually possess. Yeah. Uh, I understand the logic behind showing this work uh, to measure our logic process. I just received a negative reaction. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But the kicker with doing stuff in your head, right, when you're first being introduced to a mathematical concept is because when you're first being introduced to a mathematical concept, the problems are easy, right? But the, the method applies to even the hardest problems. So if you are doing everything in your head, for easy problems most people really don't understand how to do them for harder problems because you can't do them in your head so you have to know what the process is because they think you're copying someone no it's not because of copying some may be but it's not because of copying i argue it's easier when your denominators are functions of one or more variables i don't know if it's easier so the work allows the uh, reduction of fault in harder concepts, yes, basically, right? So take a look at this. Let's assume we have this. Here, I'll show you how you calculate the common denominator for numbers. And if you guys want, later on in the next stream, we'll do rational functions, right? Let's assume we have the following. One over 24 plus three over uh, 70 minus one over uh, da -da 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 20. Eight. Okay. What's the common denominator? Like, if you multiply this times this times this, it's going to be a gigantic number. It's okay, because then these are just numbers. But what if there was plus x minus w and stuff like this in there, right? This is the way you do it. Break these down into their factor trees, right? So 24 breaks down into 2 times 12, 2 times 6, 2 times 3. 70 breaks down to 7 times 10, 2 times, 2 times 5, right? 28 breaks down into 2 times 14, seven, 2 times 7, right? Here's the way the lowest common denominator works, okay? Take the biggest grouping of any individual number and mul multiply them together, and that's the common denominator. So if you're going to add all these guys up, you look at the first breakdown first, and anything you broke down, whatever you broke down is already gone. So this number is 24, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, right? The answer is this. <laughs> you did it with a calculator. <laughs> Hilarious. So take a look at this. The biggest grouping of any individual number. There's three twos here, one two here, and two twos here. So the biggest grouping we have is three twos. So the lowest common denominator is gonna be two times two times two. And then we look at the next number. Here's a three. 
one three, no threes, no threes. So the biggest grouping of threes we have is one three. I'm done for my mind. <laughs> so you got times three. This one, you got a seven. You got one seven here, no sevens here, one seven there. So you need a seven times seven. You're done with all these numbers. Oh, you got a five here, no five here, no five here. So you need a five. The common denominator is this. Multiply them all out, that's your common denominator. Now, what are you going to multiply this guy by? Well, take a look at this. This guy already has three twos and a three. Here's three twos and a three. So you multiply the one by 35 because you already got those ones. What do you multiply a three by? Well, you have a seven. You don't need that. You got a five. You don't need that. And you have a two. So these guys are gone. So you multiply it by four times two is 12. So you multiply three by 12. 28. You got two twos and a seven. Two twos and a seven you already got. So you multiply the one up there by six times five is 30. So you multiply that by 30. Right? Powerful, 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 powerful. Okay. You find the largest common factor without prime factorization. This is especially important for large numbers, which are hard to factorize. Yeah. But for small numbers, prime factorizing easier by hand. Yeah, it is for sure. My mom makes me watch this channel. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> I can stop. <laughs> fun, guys. Fun. Thanks for being here. We'll call the stream. It's been a couple of hours. And we went full on today. Fantastic. That's what I love. Going full on. We did physics. We did mathematics. Thank you for the questions, by the way. Mask of Raven, thank you for the help. Racer Kill, thank you for the help. Um, thank you for the clarifications. Thank you for correcting any mistakes I made. Thank you for the subs. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the bits. Right? Great stream. Very fun. Very fun. How often do you stream? I stream uh, two to three times a week. Uh, that's what I do while I'm at. Great stream, you're all. Great stream. Fantastic stream. And because I have students and uh the, the the i do other things and i'm shooting videos and stuff like this i don't i haven't set up a regular schedule they tell me to be successful on twitch you need to set up a regular schedule that people can know that they're tuning in at that time i'm not there yet i guess <laughs> I'll, I'll add that in when i when we're gonna kick things up a bit but right now this is working for me this is you know it's working for a lot of people that are here uh and i do announce the streams on our discord page like two to three days beforehand i announce them on twitter i announce them on gab i announce them on minds and i uh, announced them announce the streams on my patreon page right so there's notifications that go out if you sub to me uh you know you don't even have to uh, donate money on patreon you can just follow and sends out the notifications right if you can support it through patreon fantastic that's great if you can sub through here fantastic right um but it does i do announce the streams two to three days beforehand that we do it okay that is the most important thing that is it is got in at the end but very enjoyable thanks this strain thank you for being here i'm glad you made the last little part i was going a little fast speedy gonzalez style but uh i'm in speed mode now because we're trying to cover as much as we can we didn't fit it all in right wish there was more teaching learning channels on twitch I, I i think it's coming i think it's coming just to let you know like a few months ago i had someone from twitch contact me saying that we've noticed you're doing things other than gaming we'd like to talk to you right oh jjt you missed the stream i'll be doing that we're doing one tomorrow talking about relationships starting at i don't know what time we're starting <laughs> what time are we starting tomorrow <laughs> What time are we starting tomorrow? What time are we starting tomorrow? Tomorrow we're starting at, what are we calling the stream tomorrow? Open discussion on relationships, do's and don'ts of human interaction. We're starting at 3 p.m. tomorrow, 3 p.m. Uh, my time, PDT, uh, West Coast, Canada, United States. Thank you very much for the stream again. As always, it is a privilege to be able to access this space you created for us. M my pleasure, really, human. my pleasure, man. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and if you can make it tomorrow uh, i'll see you guys tomorrow okay and then later on the week i'll announce the 
the next streams for next weekend okay that's it for now gang thanks for being here fun fun stream bye for now